Yo guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going through exercise 2.17 from the Art of Electronics. And for this exercise, we are basically looking at a color mirror circuit and we need to go through some calculations to show that a statement is true. The statement being, transistor Q3 does not have to be matched to Q1 and Q2, but if it has the same beta, basically the current gain, then you get an exact cancellation of the small base current error that is experienced on the simple mirror circuit. So I went through this circuit in a lot of detail in my last video. So please check that out before you go through this video. So this video is going to be heavily focused on doing the calculation for the question itself. I will briefly explain how the current mirror works. So for this circuit, we are looking at the Wilson mirror today. And in the Wilson mirror, we basically have three transistors, as you can see on the screen now. You have Q1 and Q2. These transistors are matched so that they are basically have the same characteristics. And you also have Q3 here, which is a additional component introduced into the simple current mirror to help offset some errors and create a better current source. So these two transistors are matched, so they have the same gain. Now, if you look at this circuit, how it works, you have VCC over here. Let's say that VCC, for example, is 10 volts. You have a VBE drop over here and you have a VBE dropped over here as well. So this junction is going to be VCC minus the VBE voltage drop. So let's say 0 0.6, then you are going to get 9.4 volts on this junction. Then you can see a connection from this base of the two transistors to the collector of Q2. So if this is 9.4 volts, then that means that the collector of Q2 is also tied to 9.4 volts as well. Now, if you see Q3, it's another PNP transistor. So you're going to have another 0.6 volts drop approximately over here. So therefore, the collector of Q1 is tied to your VCC minus two times the base emitter voltage, which let's say is 1.2 volts in this case. Then this is going to be 8.8 .8 volts if the power supply was 10 volts. So you have 8.8 .8 volts over here. You have 9.4 volts here and 9.4 volts on this junction over here. So in this case, this is obviously a PNP transistor circuit, but you can build this circuit out with NPN transistors as well. You basically flip this upside down, but there are examples available on um, Wikipedia and YouTube as well. So in this transistor, the current comes out from the base over here. So you have some base current that comes out from Q1. You have a base current that comes out for Q2 as well. This is basically going down this path. So your collector current of Q2 plus your base currents from Q1 and Q2 will go into the emitter of Q3. So you have IB1 plus IB2 plus IC2 flowing into the emitter of Q3. You also get the base current flowing from here into this programming resistor over here. And obviously you get the collector current from Q1 flowing down this path as well. Now, if you wanted to set the mirroring current for this circuit, you basically have a known voltage over here. So in this case, let's say 8.8 .8 volts. If you wanted to set one milliamp on the current mirror, then you basically use Ohm's law to calculate a required resistor to get one milliamp down here. And you will basically get one milliamp in this branch of the current mirror circuit. So whatever's flowing down here is mirrored to flow down here. So that's why it's called a current mirror, basically. Now, that's just a brief explanation. Obviously, if you want to learn more about this, check out my previous video where I go through the simple current mirror and the Wilson current mirror in more detail. Let's get started with the question now. Basically, we need to show that this statement is true. So I've got this LT spice circuit that I've drawn up on the side, and I'll keep that over here. We're going to start off with some assumptions. We're basically saying that VBE of this and VBE of this transistor, so Q1 and Q2, is equal. We're going to say that the base currents are equal as well. So IB1 or whatever current is flowing out from here is the same as the current that's flowing out from this direction as well. What we want to do for this question and to arrive at a solution is find an equation for IP, which is the current flowing down this path, and IL, which is the current flowing down this path. So you'll see it's easy to get an equation, but then it was slightly more complicated to get to what the question was asking us to do that I didn't get to an exact solution as the question suggests, 
but we got to a very close approximation which I think is probably good enough. I don't think we can do any better than that. But if you do know a better solution, let me know in the comment section below. So first of all, let's look at IP. So that's this current down here. We have the current from Q1. So IC1 over here, flowing down this path. And we have the current coming out from the base of Q3, also flowing down this path. So IP is equal to IC1 plus IP. P3, and that's basically Kirchhoff's current law we're using there. Now, if we look at the current gain of a transistor, which is IC is equal to beta times the base current, we can replace IC1 with this equation over here, and we leave IB3 as is. IL is a little bit simpler, so that's this current down here, and basically that is equal to IC3, which is equal to the gain of Q3 plus the base current of Q3. So IL, we can note down as this. Then we're going to go through a number of different steps to try and get to the solution. And I'll just explain to you what I'm doing. And we should get to a solution at the end. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. So IE3, which is the current flowing into this junction, is equal to IC2, which is the current coming out from here, plus this current, plus this current. IC3 is equal to the current flowing out from here is equal to IE3 minus IB3. There's a certain amount of current coming out from here. IB3 leaves out, so, so the remainder of the current flows down in this direction. Now we can rearrange that to get IE3 by itself. So that's the emitter current is equal to IC3 plus IB3. Now if we substitute two and one, and IB1 equals IB2, so our first assumption. We can rewrite this equation where we are replacing IE3 with this section over here. So IC3 plus IB3 from here is equal to IC2, so that's this bit here, and 2IB, we're basically saying IB1 and IB2 are equal. So we get this equation. We're also saying that the gain of Q1 and Q2 are three, so for going forward, I'm just going to label that as beta. So IC2, which is the current coming out in this direction, is equal to the current coming out from here times the gain of Q1. So IC2 is equal to IB, which is the current, times the gain. IC3, which is the current coming out from here, is equal to IB3, which is the current coming out from here, times the gain of this transistor over here. I'll leave that on the screen for a few seconds so that you can see and make notes if you need to. Now if I substitute 4, 5 into 3, so that's 4, 5 and substitute both of those into here. So we got IC2, so I'm going to replace this with this part and this section with this part over here. You basically end up with this equation on the screen now, where you have IB3 times the gain of Q3 plus IB3 equals IB times beta plus 2IB. And what I've done over here is just rearrange that slightly in that we've got IB3 by itself. So we've got beta plus 1. If you multiply that, obviously, you end up with the same thing over here. And I've done a similar sort of thing here where I've taken basically factorized with IB in this case. So you got B plus two inside the bracket and you got IB outside the bracket. And finally, I've basically got IB three by itself. So I've moved this part down over here. So you got beta plus two divided by B, beta three plus one times IB. So hopefully that's clear. So I've moved this part down over here. and that gets me IB3 by itself. Now I'm going to substitute those calculations back into the IP and IL equations. So if you remember back to them, IP was beta 1, IB1 plus IB3. So that beta 1 obviously is going to be beta now. And IL was beta 3, IB3. So you can see there's IB3, beta 1, IB1. And there's IB3 here as well, plus beta 3. On, on here, it's not a plus, it's a multiplication. So IP, uh, the programming current here, is basically IC, which is beta times IB. So the gain of this times the current flowing out from the base 
plus the IB3 equation that we calculated in the previous slide. So that's this equation over here. So we substitute that into IP equation and we can basically factorize that out with IB as well and we end up with this. So IP is equal to IB and in brackets we got beta plus 1 and again brackets we got beta plus 2 divided by beta 3 plus 1. And IL if you remember was beta 3 IB3 so IB3 obviously is this section over here so we're just going to add that in that's multiplied by b3 so we're replacing ib3 with the equation that we got to so now we have ip and il so for the statement to be true that we're trying to solve we need il which is the load current to be equal to the programming current which is basically what the question is saying we get an exact cancellation of the errors so what i'm going to do is make them equal so i'm going to put il on one side and ip on the other side Basically, from now on, I'm just simplifying the equation to get to a simple form of basically this. So as you can see, I've multiplied both sides by B3 plus 1. So that gets rid of this and this. You basically end up with this. So you get beta 3 and in brackets, you got beta plus 2, which is this part over here because you get rid of this. And on this side, you multiply this with beta 3 plus 1 and you get rid of this section over here. And then I'm just simplifying. So it's very basic math. So hopefully you can follow along. So again, just simplifying further. I've basically moved this to the other side. So that gets rid of the this equation and this equation. So you end up with 2 beta 3 equals 2 beta plus 2. So obviously you've got a factor of 2 on both sides. So you can get rid of it. And you basically end up with beta 3 equals beta plus 1. So I think this is the correct solution in that I don't think we can get any closer than this. As you can see, it's not an exact cancellation. You do have plus one, but beta is generally much larger than one anyway. So, you know, it might be 50, might be 100 for a transistor. So what we are saying here is that if the gain of Q3 was the same as the gain of Q2 and Q1, which is basically this section here, your currents so ip and il would be equal you can ignore the plus one sign because obviously beta is much larger than plus one anyway so that is the solution for this question hopefully you found that useful if you have any questions please let me know in the comment section below thank you for watching today don't forget to like comment and subscribe you can also become a member if you want to which would help me out so thank you bye for now